up guys, we are back and today we're going to try and experiment making a pull tab pyrotechnic. Now I found a US Army handbook on Amazon and as I started flipping through it I found a cool tutorial on how to make a fuse igniter from a book of matches. The idea being that you can start a fuse with a simple flick of a wrist. That seemed like a pretty dang cool experiment. So I played around with it and I made a few modifications to make it even simpler and even more convenient. Now the materials for this experiment are very simple. All we're gonna need is a book of paper matches. I know back in the day you could find these at gas stations and hotels, but I just went down to the grocery store where they sell them in large packs of 50 for just a couple of bucks. Can't beat that. Now to kick things off, we're gonna make just the igniter itself from one single book of matches. It's very easy and this is how it works. Go ahead and open up your book of matches. That'll reveal the four layers of matches inside. And if you grab onto the base and just give the cardboard a tug, it'll separate off that staple and leave your book of matches in two different pieces. If you look at the base of the matches, you'll notice a little staple and that needs to come out. You can use your fingernails, your teeth, a pair of pliers might be a better way to go. Or you can just grab the two cardboard bases at the bottom of the matches and give it a gentle tug. What we're going to do next is take the actual cardboard housing for the matchbooks. We're going to lay it down on the table so that the striker strip is facing up. Then we're going to take both edges and fold them in toward the center until they meet in the middle. The two edges of the cardboard should butt up nicely against each other. Now to hold them in place, let's just take a piece of electrical tape and wrap it around where the striker strip would be on the inside. Now you can see this forms a little funnel shape where it's nice and open at the top, closes off around the striker strip, and then pinches off and gets nice and tight at the bottom. That's all we need to do with this piece for now, so let's set that to the side and move on to the matches next. Now working with our matches is going to be even simpler. All we have to do is take one of the sets and lay it flat on the table, and then take both edges and fold them a little past center so the cardboard folds up into thirds. The matches will want to unravel, so to hold them in place, take a piece of tape and wrap it around the bundle about a quarter inch down from the match heads. And that right there is really about it. All we have to do now is take our bundle of matches, insert it down into the striker tube, and fold it all up. Now as you push the bundle of matches down into the striker tube, you don't want to go too far. You want the heads of the matches to stop above the striker strip. And you'll know you're there when your bundle sticks out about a quarter to half an inch. Now from here what we're going to do is form a pull tab, and to do that we're just going to take the top of the striker tube, place our finger right in the center, and loop the tip over until it wraps around and touches the first piece of tape. Use another piece of tape to hold the tip in place and you'll end up with something looking like this, a little pyrotechnic whistle. So check it out guys, using nothing but a book of paper matches and a little bit of tape, we've created ourselves a really cool looking ring pull initiator. The question is, does it work? I based this off the idea of a ring pull grenade, and all you have to do to activate it is stick your finger through the loop, grab the base of the bundle firmly with your other hand, and pull. It really is just as simple as that, and to get this thing to ignite a fuse really is pretty simple as well. You can see when you pull the two apart, the friction from the striker strip on the inside ignites all the match heads at once. That delivers a lot of heat and a lot of energy in one single burst. I love the way these things light off, and with a little bit of practice, you can get them to work every time. Now I should mention that if you wrap the casings on too tight, it's going to take a lot of force to pull them apart, but even just the littlest bit of friction will set them off. But conversely, if you don't wrap them tight enough, there's a good chance that when you pull them apart, they don't let off at all. Ha! Huh. Fail. So I personally think it's better to err on the side of caution and wrap them a little bit tighter. Alright, moving on to the fuses. The kind of fuse I like to use is called Visco Fuse. This is a safety firework fuse that I got from a firework supply company. It takes about a second in an open flame for this stuff to light off. To get this stuff to light off with our pull start pyro, we only have to make one simple modification, and that's to tie a small knot in the top. Now to get the fuses to work with our system, all we have to do is take the knotted end and stick it at the top of our match heads on the bundle and start rolling it up from the side. Once we've got it all rolled up, you're going to notice it makes a nice little pyrotechnic bouquet of match heads with the knotted fuse at the top. And once we put a little bit of tape around here, we'll be able to tug on that fuse and the knot will not slide through. Now go ahead and make the striker casing like you did before, but this time take the end of your fuse and push it through first. Now we can go ahead and wrap the loop back into position the same way we did before, and our pull string fuse igniter is complete. So I'm going to put it to the test for you so we can see how it works. See, look at that. I can't even get my barbecue igniter to light anyway. But that's okay, because we've got pull start ignition. Glasses on for safety. So theoretically, we stick our finger in the loop, grab onto the other side, and pull. Woo! Yeah! You can see my hand just pulling off that sheathing, and there it goes. One match lights, it looks like it lights the other ones, and then within about a second or less, the fuse lights off. 
So it looks like if you err on the side of making them a little bit tighter, there's a higher chance that your handle will break off, but a lot higher chance that your fuse will actually ignite as well. I love this stuff. The fuse worked, guys. That was amazing. That's really good news. That's very encouraging. Let's try that again. What I'm actually really curious to know is how slowly can we pull this thing and still have it go off? I'm gonna pull it extremely slowly. Let's see what happens. It's building quite a bit of tension right now. Whoa! That worked. And the match just fell off, but they're still going. But that definitely worked, that definitely worked. And you can see the match heads light off and within a fraction of a second, the fuse ignites as well. That gets hot really fast, guys. Sweet. Dang, look how bright that fire is. And that really does send off a shower of sparks, isn't it? That's what I'm talking about, right there. And that is success. I love to see things work. So there you have it, guys. Apparently with a simple book of paper matches and a little bit of tape, we now have the power to ignite pyrotechnics with a flick of a finger. Whoa! Hey, thanks for joining me for this experiment, guys. I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then. Thanks to Amazon for the book. I'll be sending you 25 bucks. Oh wait, I already did. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. And remember, I'm giving away prizes now on every new video. All you have to do to qualify is subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, and select to be notified when my next videos get released. The secret link to my giveaways will be pinned in the comments for the first 12 hours. If you like what I'm doing, show your support right now by giving this video a big thumbs up and share with a friend. I love you back, and I'll see you next time.